So it's day 13. And after the staggering display of ineptitude last time trying to make random access writing work, let's try and make random access reading work. This should not actually be as difficult as for writing because I don't believe we have any uh, nasty low-level bugs that need fixing, which is honestly what took most of the time. And also we can uh, reuse a lot of the code. So uh, the stuff we need is basically all of this. This is the code that uh, computes the uh, module extent record number from the random access pointer and switches to the new extent. So that is all perfectly common. So we're going to do a, we already have some seeks. So seek to random location. Yes, you need to point to the random access location, shifting extents as necessary. So that is this code. So we're just going to cut and paste it. Like so. Um, so we do actually need to cope with errors because, well, that's, honestly, this can this can uh, fail. So we're just going to put in a exit a clear carry here. Uh, if carry is set, stop. Uh, actually, actually, there is a error code for this. Um, I I actually went through and, co and collected all the CPM error codes. Error reporting in CPM is kind of hit and miss. Um, actually, I will put these in the. I will put these in here. So this is a enum CPM errors and enum. And just for the namespacing, switch case, these should all be dollar signs, no commas, these should all be uh, semicolons, okay, so uh, if we, if when doing a random access operation we can't write the old extent back to disk, it actually returns with a specific error. So this is going to be um, LDA CPME can't close PCS exit. This one is going to be CPME uh, no dear full directory full. No, it's not. It is dear full, and this becomes. Exit. I am just wondering, can we rely on the error code being returned by these? Probably not. Also, I need to go through and do a pass and fix all the error handling, which is just basically bogus. Seek to random location, BCS. Uh, exit. Okay, so this is only for writes.
Okay, so for a read, we do entry read random, convert to user FCB, seek to random location. We are going to want to copy this code and then modify it. So if current record is greater than RC, then we need to return an error code. So we take out the add one. So if the current record is greater than the record count, then instead of updating the record count, we set this to uh, no data, I think it's called. No block, no block. And uh, return. Then we want to do the read. Uh, I'm not sure that's right. Seek to block here. I believe this is going to try and allocate a new block, which is not what we want. And wait a minute. The read sequential here. This is the code that we want. Seek to block, we want to rename. Seek to block uh, um, actually is only used on the code path that creates a block. So we're going to rename seek to block to seek to block and create. Okay. So our read sequential code here. No. Here. We are going to copy this code. No, I'm going to copy all this code. We do not want to move the FCB on. So we get the disk block in XA. If it is zero, then we fail with a no data error. Now, this is not necessarily right. Um, So the issue is this create file down here. On a read, we don't want to create a new extent. We only want to do that on the right path. So on a read, we actually want to do the open file. And then, if it fails, return an error code. So we want all of this code except for create file here. Okay, so if 
we fail open file then we're going to return no extent in our write random code then we do seek to random location we are going to test for carry set you know, is this a failure so test for no extent if so make a new one and in fact if I'm going to change the logic round if it's not if it's not no extent fail with an error otherwise create the new one So write random should still work. Read random will correctly fail with an error. So if there is no extent, we'll get a no extent error returned, which is correct. Let me find the documentation. This is John Elliott CPM reference page, which is enormously useful. So read random. This is our no extent error code. I do not know when record number can be out of range. No, I don't. Um, this is the no block error we're returning. Okay. So we also need to add this to the our, our jump table. Okay, so we fire up our emulator. Uh, we still have our RAND routine, so let's just do a quick test. That looks like it's worked. We have a file containing one block. Um, I've also I've rearranged the file system. This is now, I think, almost as big as will fit on an Acorn DFS floppy disk which is about 200k so there's a bit of space left over for the MOS file system which is half a k and the BIOS and BDOS both of which live in the MOS file system so our CPM file system occupies what remains uh, but I will also change the block size to 1k so that works fine uh, so yeah, I believe that to be working. So let's uh, let's change our RAND program. So we are going to change this so it test reads so we are going to create the output file open now hang on we don't want, don't want to create the out okay the, that is the output file we are going to open the input file
Um, okay, we are first. We are going to. So first we are going to pass the parameter that is in the second parameter. This will be overwritten when we try and open the input file, so we preserve it in a variable. So we set the record of the input file. We read the input file. We then write the output file and close it. a char star. That's going to be a return zero and that's going to be a semicolon. Okay, so what this should do is read one record out of the input file and write it to that. Possibly printing the error. Okay, so six whole records. So let us read test.sub record zero. I am not sure that worked. We did create a dat file which is empty. So the fact that it didn't print anything suggests it failed here. Uh, that's because OXFF is a error code. Okay, and test sub zero. Right, well, it tried to read sector 1192, which is wrong. This parsing code is not working. And then we read the random uh, record that failed, but we ignored the error, so it should have created our dat, yeah, which is one record, so we can dump it, and what we are seeing is the default DMA buffer which overlaps with the input parameters, so uh, that's why we are seeing test.su here. Not sure what happened to the rest of it. This should be one record from the file. Interesting. Well, let's just do a print i record here. Because at, at this point, this should be valid. That should be print i. Print i is a machine code routine I made to um, print 16 bit numbers. It is not necessarily very good. That's not a 16 bit number. Ah, I forgot to put a CRLF in, so it's actually printed 
one twice. So this isn't worked. Start sub zero. We got a dot and a four. So two parameters. These should both have gone into C they should have gone into CPM FCB and CPM FCB two. So our programs are loading at 1900 on this BBC master. Uh, seven, I think it was. Okay. So this is the 6502 startup code for C programs. Um, we then do initialization, which I believe we can skip, and then we go into main, which is here. So, here, yeah, here is uh, where we're allocating stuff off the soft stack. When we save parameters, it's all a bit wordy. Uh, I don't know what that's doing. Well, here's a JSR, which is where we're calling probably A to I, which suggests that it's put our um, I bet that 1B BC might be our P block It's here. One BBC is not the P block. One BBC is uh, the command line buffer. So here you can see the test sort of sub is there and our zero is there. Have I missed a bit? Has it inlined A to Y? It could well have. Is CPM FCB2 actually pointing at the right place? I think it might not be. Let's just take a look at our uh, MOS 65 code. So this should be here. Yes, it is in fact pointing at the wrong place. CPM FCB2 is after CPM FCB in this code, which is not right, but they should overlap. So we just add 16 on. So I'm going to have to rebuild um, 
rebuild Marcelo VM. Clean. Build. Okay, power up the emulator. Right. Rand test.sub zero. I believe that is more correct. So it's created that. You can dump it. And yes, this is the first record of our test.sub, which of course is only one record. So we can do rand uh, rand.com zero. We now get the first record of rand.com. We can do ram rand rand.com five. This tech gets the last record. That's the record number and that's the error code. So here is uh, the tail end of the, uh, the, the constant data in RAND. So that'll be this FCP, followed by the relocation data, and there it is terminating. Now let's try and do, try to get the next record, and that fails. It doesn't print the error code because the bindings I've got around the uh, these routines uh, actually uh, return a simple pass fail code and stash the error code off into another variable. So I can actually can do that. So, so we're going to do rand test.sub1. This will fail. And this is reported error code 1. No block. Correct. So it's worth noting that, firstly, that, that name is not quite correct. That should be no data. Uh, there is actually a block for record one, but we are after the end of the file, therefore it is still refusing to return data. And we're going to do a no data here. No data, CCRTS. So this then becomes now if we do if we try and get a record that's up that's not in the current block that will produce the same error but this time it's because it actually hasn't found a block there if, however, I ask for a record that's in the next extent, we get error code 4, meaning that uh, it's tried to seek to an extent that doesn't exist. But this should all be absolutely fine. Uh, I think this is working. So we're going to call that done. We don't have any files that are more than one extent. But... I imagine that will work because it's all the same code as for write random. Okay, good. Let's. What's changed? Yeah. Reading from random records works. And. Platform. Uh, SDK. Git commit. Platform. Um, no, I only want to commit the p block file. Okay. Uh, put cpm fcb2 in the right place. Okay. So we only have a few more things to do. Uh, let's 
take a break from random access and do set file attributes. This is actually very simple. It's basically the same code as rename. So we are just going to So CPM stores file attribute bits in uh, the high bit of the file name. Uh, these are defined down here. So uh, in the extension, which is three characters, we have the read-only bit, the system bit, and the archive bit. Uh, set if the file has not been changed since it was last copied. This suggests that we need to make sure that that bit gets cleared when we modify a file, but I think I'm not going to worry about that just yet. The rest of the file name has got other bits that are as four are reserved for the BDOS for our undefined user attributes. So all set file atras does is it scans the directory looking for any file which matches the file name and then it effectively just renames the file to the file to the file name in the FCB, thus updating the bits. So we are going to copy the file name. from the FCB to the dear end, which means that we only need one index. So we can put that in Y. So we read, we write, we increment, and we keep going till we're done. And then we write that back to disk and we are finished. Okay. So, observant viewers will notice that there is no ccp.sys here because I made it because I made it a system file, which is why it is displayed in parentheses here. Now, I'm trying to remember the syntax. I think we can do this. That hasn't done anything. Let me go look up how stat works. Okay, here is the original stat documentation. And actually adding $s is supposed to make it display size information in bytes. Uh, hang on, in bytes? Uh, the size field lists the virtual size in records while the rec field sums the number of virtual records in each extent. Okay, I think that's a stat bug. I think we are just, I think Rex here is supposed to display the number of allocated records and size is supposed to return the virtual size of the file and I think I'm reporting size as rec. So I'll go and fix this, the size code later. The code for actually changing attributes is $sys. So so that is 
a system file, hence the parentheses. Uh, dir is the opposite of sys, so we should be able to do dir. And it hangs. Well, that's nice. How about we took that into a CPY so it doesn't spin constantly overwriting all of memory. Okay, let's try that one again. ccp.sys dir ccp.sys set to dir and there it is. We can do that and it's gone again. Uh, read only. We haven't implemented this. The read only status is recorded to the file, blah, 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 blah. When file is marked read only, subsequent attempts to erase or write to the file produce the following message on your screen. So that's a hard error, and we haven't done those in, uh, in the BDOS yet. But, I mean, we can still set the files, so we can change, set this to read-only. Is it displayed here? It is not. Oh, there it is. Read-only. Okay, so setting file attributes works. Let's get back to random access. So we've got these two, compute file size and compute random pointer. Let's do compute random pointer because it's easy. Um, the random access pointer to wherever the FCB is currently pointing. So this is so that you can read sequentially through a file and then you can convert the sequential pointer in the FCB to a random access pointer so you can seek back again later. So all this is is the opposite of this code here. So, just thinking the best way to do this. We are going to start in the middle. With the extent number. Now this needs to be shifted right by one. The top bit goes into the um, so the top the top four bits of the extent number go into the high byte of the random access pointer. The bottom bit of the extent number goes into the top of the low byte. So, SRA, shift right, bottom bit goes into C, store the top into temp.
and so this gives us that part we now want to or in the record count no the current record which goes from 0 to 7f. So rather than storing it, we can actually just that we are now done with the low byte okay we now need to finish the computation for the high byte by shifting this shifting that left by four hang on I need to load it don't I Oring in the uh, the four bits from the extent, which we put in temp plus one. And we are now finished with the high byte. So that should be all there is to it. Should be a logic shift right. Okay. Uh, how do we do this? Um, So we're going to get a number from the second parameter. We're then going to open the input file. We are then going to keep writing, uh, keep reading. that many times then we are going to print the record count and stop okay so if I do a zero then <laughs> Uh, I can't remember what I called that now. Uh, the, the, there doesn't really seem to be defined names for all the entry points. Everybody uses different ones. The original documentation, which I've got here, doesn't actually give them names at all. It just defines what they do. Um, which is not in this file so oh yeah uh, llvm moss sdk moss platform cpm65 cpm.h what did i call it 
seek to sequential position which is actually uh, more descriptive of what it actually does seek to sequential position of CPM FCB so rand rand.com zero good that is what we wanted okay rand.com one good five yes good this is actually what we wanted we are now reading 20 records from the file but it's only six long so it stops and produces an error after the sixth so our sequential pointer hasn't advanced so what's our biggest file probably the CCP six nine one. I know what the biggest file is it's stat we know it's 55 records long yes good and if we put this to like 200 it's still doing the right thing that's not really a very robust test because we don't have files bigger than that. Uh, let's actually put one in. We're using OS3BDOS to ASM, so we'll put that in there. Okay. Okay, so there is our big file that is now four extents long. 64K, 512 records. So we can do EDOS to ASM uh, 200, which should be in the second extent, and we're getting the right number. 400. That pause is because it is actually reading the disk. 600. Interesting. It's 512 records long. That should. Okay, that's wrong. Why is that? wrong has it tried to advance to the next extent it's possible it shouldn't have because right sequential shouldn't move on to the next extent once it hits the rest of the file it should stay at that record I mean these numbers are correct but the maths is working And you know what that means. Okay, if I go. So we are of read the extent number, which is four. That's what we expect for the end of the file. Is it's five extents long? Four extents? I don't remember now. Oh, it's uh, almost exactly 64K. So yes, it's four extents long. Oh, right. We have read the last block of the last extent and we've advanced to the beginning of the next extent, which is empty. So we have, that might be what's confusing it. So 1B, 2B, here is the FCB.
that's interesting. Why is that a four, not a three? It's much more likely I've misremembered how long it is than uh, that the number's wrong. So we've actually just computed the uh, the high byte as two, which is four shifted left by one, and carry is clear because the high bit of the low byte is not set. So we now raw that to, to prepare the low byte, which is zero. Our current record is five, seven. Okay. Again, that number seems wrong. So we are in the record count. Yeah. We write it. So there. We haven't written the 4 4 yet. We're about to do that. So we get S2. Which has the top bit set. Okay. And we shift it. We don't need to remove that because we're shifting it left, which means that the top bit gets shifted away into nothingness. So there are no modules. We're on module zero. So when we write back this is our record count which is 0257. How long is this file? 64K, 512 records. These numbers are wrong. Okay, just check this. We go OS3 BDOS to ASM is three record, uh, but four. Four derents, four extents, uh, the last one of which is numbered three and is full. So, yes, we have a problem. That'll be here. Close, extent, and so. I believe that what's happening is, yeah, uh, what's happening is that we've tried to read off the end of the file and the BDOS is not robust for that. So, because oh, we didn't put any error checking in our program. So this has closed the last extent. It's advanced the pointer to the beginning of extent four correctly. We then try to open it. We don't find it. We just see what read sequential is supposed to return. Yes, end of file. So we return CPME no data. We then Uh, do our test program then tries to read again, 
but it doesn't this code doesn't know that the file has been closed and the FCB is no longer valid. So it assumes that the data it has in the FCB where this value here has been updated to 4 is valid so it starts reading through the file until it reaches the end. And the reason why the record count was just a couple lower than, the, than a full extent is because the only time when I was about to say the only time when we don't actually advance the pointer is at the end of the file but that's not true we do still advance the pointer I think I think that what we need to do here is to clear the record count The zero record count means that we will always fail here. Uh, in the beginning of the next extent. Uh, because it means that the current record, which is going to be zero because it's reset here, uh, is equal to the new record count of the unopened uh, dirent, which is zero. So we'll always go through the end of file logic. We will see that the record count is not 1 to 8, therefore we are not at the end of the extent. Therefore, there is always going to be no data available, so we just immediately bail out. Try this. Um, so rand OS3 VDOS to ASM 600. Did I take my hangout? I did not. Good. 512. We reached the end of the file and stopped. So, we now know this works. Uh, of course, we don't know it with modules because we don't have any files that big because I uh, don't, a disk isn't big enough. We could put a sparse file in. Uh, honestly, the, mod, uh, the module stuff is easy, so if this works, I trust the rest of it, at least for now. Um, okay, so we have two more to do. And they are actually both going to be annoying. So compute file size, or as I've called it in the other naming system, seek to end, will actually uh, determine the virtual size of the file and seek to uh, one past the last record. So this is going to be... 
here. And I just want to double check exactly what this does. Random access, read, write, compute file size. Set the random record count byte, the FCB, as the random access pointer, to the number of 128 byte records in the file. Yes, so that will be one past the uh, length of the file. So you can then start writing and uh, you won't overwrite any existing data. So the way this works is we are going to have to iterate through the directory looking for all the DRNs with this file name and tracking the maximum extent module and record count that we see. That will give us the data we need. So uh, can't use tempt here. So this is basically more directory scanning. Uh, do we have some code I can steal? We're actually going to call find first. Oh, we can, we can steal from open. Um, ah, it's more complicated than that, but that's fine. Compute file size. So we prepare the FCB. We want to match just the file name. We call find first. If there is at least one matching DRNT, we do stuff keep going until the carry is set and then we do our computation So where are we going to track this information? Um, honestly, I think we have to track it in the FCB because we have got three bytes there and our zero, our one and our two. Okay. So we need to read the, we need to start at the top and work down. So we read S2. We then compare with the value in R2, and then we go over here to my uh, second favorite 6502 lookup table. We want to know if current DRNT, if, if current DRNT.S2 is greater than FCB.R2. So that's greater than or equal to BCS.
Ähm, no, it is more complicated than that. Aha. Uh -huh. So the greater than or equal to if it's not equal to it must be greater um, greater than so if it is equal to then we need to okay if it is equal then we need to compare EX. Which was going into R1. If this is equal to, then we need to compare against RC. Okay, so if the carry is set and it's not equal, then we know that we have reached a strictly greater than situation when comparing these three bytes. So that we then update the values in R0, R1, R2. I do not like this. There's, I think there's a better way. Uh, the thing is, so I don't think compute file size is supposed to update the sequential position. Uh, I want to find the programming manual. It's not this file, but it's nearby. Uh, I think this is the one I've actually been looking at. Yeah, there we go. System interface. I want to see what the original text said. Compute file size. The deregister pair addresses a FCB in random mode format. Uh, well, like they always are. It just means that these three bytes are about to be overwritten, so you better be sure they're there. It contains an unambiguous file name. Upon return, the random record bytes contain the virtual file size. does not update the sequential position. Okay, I know what I am going to do. We are going to Save our sequential position onto the stack. We are going to uh, 
Okay, what I was going to do here is uh, in this code copy the Dirent's idea of where the um, of the sequential position into the FCB so that I can then call compute pointer to actually update the random access bytes because of course this is expecting uh, the value to be in param but then I will run out of storage because I need to be able to store the old random access position, which I've just overwritten. Do I need some more storage? Uh, And I will actually go and check to see whether Find First and Friends are using uh, temp. Well, not so far. nice if they didn't. See, I know that uh, doing anything with blocks uses temp. This is using temp b, which is an extra temporary byte that I had forgotten about. Why are we doing that? Okay, let's try this using temp because that will make life way easier. So we are going to uh, We are going to save the param pointer because we are going to want to update param to point at the current dirent so that we can then use compute pointer to calculate the position. We are then going to use this as the file size accumulator. So this starts at zero. Right. We now iterate through the directory. This will <laughs> it will overwrite the three bytes after the current directory entry, which is in the directory buffer owned by the BIOS. We can't do that. Ugh. Okay, I am going to need to break up this code, I think.
to sequential position. Uh, no. Calculate sequential position. So, finish with the low byte. So you want that to go into A. So this is then working on the high byte. High byte goes into X. And then we return it. Now, overflow. I completely forgot about overflow. Uh, the reason why the record count is three bytes, even though we only ever use two, is because there is a single situation when you need three bytes, which is when the file is the maximum length, because then you will run out of bits. The maximum length file uh, is 8 megabytes. So that is a hundred and twenty eight records, so six five five three six records, which is this many extents. Hang on, no, that's not right. Uh, there are there are 128 records in an extent, so it's this many extents. That is also too big. Because the extent number... Oh, yeah, okay, that's right. It's this many extents. The extent byte goes up to 32, which means the module number, the S2 byte, can go up to 16. But this is the file length. So the Uh, this is pointing at the last extent, so this will only ever go up to 15. So what this is going to return is the record number of the record that we're currently looking at. This wants to return 1 plus that. So, right, okay, we do not need to worry about overflow here. So, compute sequ uh, calculate sequential position. Okay, and then we want to write it into param. And we're done. So, 
Down here we are going to call calculate sequential position and we are going to compare the value that we just returned with what's in the file size accumulator. So first we want the high byte. So uh, if if the value in the register that we got back from here is greater than or equal to this carrier set. Now we want to compare the low byte. Why am I doing plus three? That is because plus three is what I want. Then I compare the low byte. If it's greater than or equal to then we want to update it. So stx temp plus three. End if, set end if, and go around again. Okay. So this will give us the record count of the largest possible record. Okay, so now we are going to well, first we are going to put param back the way it was. So we're going to increment the file size counter. So increment the low byte. If it rolled over, increment the high byte. If it rolled over, then the value must have been FFFF. Therefore, R2 must be 1. So now we load temp plus 3 and store it. And return. This can report an error. This, not that one, this one. That one can't return an error, but let's just put a CLC just to be sure. Okay. So this should now calculate the virtual length of a file. Let's just go and adjust this. So this is called seek to end. Okay, so rand test.com uh, has reported garbage. We don't want this anymore. That's very much not the right answer. So 
So the first time through, we find a dadirent, copy the pointer to param so that we can then use calculate sequential position which returns the value in xa. Check x with the high byte of the accumulator. Check a with the low byte of the accumulator. If they are both Uh, if the second is greater than or equal to, then the result must be greater than or equal to. So we update the file size accumulator. Keep going until we run out of dirents. Yeah. three four five so we call new user FCB we save the param pointer in a handy temp because this is where we discover whether the temps are actually preserved so it's 10 11 12 and 13 so there is our param pointer, there is our accumulator. Find first. Yep, they've been overwritten. Fantastic. Okay, I clearly need some more storage somewhere we don't need those anymore um Aren't we copying the DPH at one point? Because I thought we had some unused locations in the DPH. So we've got CD arm max and scratch one, scratch two, which is four bytes. I don't really want to because then I can't use ink. It's not so much of a problem here because I can use Y indexing. But it does kind of make a difference here. I'm just going to allocate some more space. I think we can do two bytes worth. Four, five. Uh, I'll need to check to see whether two and three are in use. That looks more plausible. Q. 
Uh, but no, it's still wrong. Um, it's three records, not one. Or it's the maths are wrong. Uh, anyway, let's try this. Break. That's not going to work. Anyway, we've got the address we wanted. So break 1505, reset, continue. Uh, rand test.com, and we've broken. Okay, so we save our values in. in Temp four and five. Hang on a second. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm all right. Uh, yes. Here are our values. So we've allocated an extra three here for param. So we've got the accumulator here and param here. So let's do find first. And we still see the right value there. OK. So carry is clear. Copy pointers. Why is that using absolute addressing there? That's not right. I've noticed this with the uh, CC65 assembler. I'm actually going to change it all to use the LLVM assembler at some point because I'm you. I don't want to mix two different tool chains. Anyway, we calculate the sequential position, which is zero. That's wrong. So if I look at 0614, this is the this is the dear end we're looking at. So it has returned a sequential position of zero from this data. Well, we've got because this code's using the rec the current record, which is here. We want to use the record count, which is here. I think I'm going to have to duplicate all that code. Well, let's just put this back here then. Uh, here we can do SDA param for my wife. Finish with low byte. I even forgot to take away that LDY. Uh, finish with low byte. Finished with high byte. Great. So this goes away. No, it doesn't, because we're going to use the code complete with the shifts. But of course, we're now working off this byte, which is the record count, not the current record. So that is one more than it should be. So now this code can overflow. Okay. Let's 
size of the file. We can still make this work. So, we're done with the low byte. Put the high byte here and the low byte here. If this last ASL Uh, has got the carry set. No, because that value won't won't uh, overflow at all. It's this one that can overflow. So if this is set to 128 and EX is the maximum possible, which is 31, and S2 is the maximum possible, which is 15, then we've overflowed. Okay. So, so if the record count is one twenty eight. If the extent is 1f, if s2 is of, then then we know that there cannot be any files bigger than this. So, we can just write zero to R zero zero to R one one to R two uh, and stop. We have to put param back. Also, we don't actually need our two extra temp spaces. because we can push them. So we need to restore param. And that 
should be the high byte. Okay, so these then do become param. Okay. So the total file size cannot overflow, but record count here can still be 128. So we are going to have to allow for that. So, uh, we have our low byte in A. Therefore, we actually need to add in the record count. Uh, this If EX was, uh, if the bottom bit of EX was one, then uh, this will now overflow. The carry will be set. So we are now going to save the carry, we fetch S2 and shift it, restore the carry, Add on the previously saved high byte and the carry, put it into X to give us our value in AX. Wow. Okay, well, let's fix this code. So temp two three now contains the record. Now contains the the record count of the file. So all we need to do now is to write zero to R two. and copy the record count into R. Okay, let's try this now. So randtest.com gives us three, which is the right number. S.sub should give us one, yeah. Okay, let's try our big file, which is actually a good example because it's completely, it's got completely full extents. 384, that's the wrong number. Also, the wrong number. Uh, 
interesting. I actually think I can rework this code to be quite a lot clearer by simply working from the top down we will always have a valid 16-bit value so let's try that so we're actually going to start with s2 so this then goes into the high byte ah we need to st we keep all this stuff in registers um, otherwise we will need yet more storage of course I think I'm going to try this anyway just to see whether I can use the stack instead because I am not pleased with this stuff. So we can use temp B. Okay, so we now load the extent byte. that in temp b we now have carry in the top byte so we get the carry value that was saved i do not believe ora will set the carry. It does not. Okay, so that carry is preserved to here. So this now gives us the low byte. We want to add in RC. Instead of putting that back into uh, temp B we can stash it in X because that then allows us to fetch the record count add it to this value this may set carry so if carry is set then we wish to increment x and this will then leave us with in ax which then allows us to do this computation here okay Still the wrong number. Anyway, I am happier with this code. It's shorter and faster. There is actually a trick you can do that makes doing uh, 6402 arithmetic so much easier, and that is to create a lookup table which is just all the numbers from 0 to 255 in order, because this will allow you to. Uh, 
uh, do arithmetic with values in, in x, we could have done uh, like this. So uh, it'll add x onto lookup table, read it, that will return a value that's the same as x. But this involves wasting a complete page of memory, so I'm not doing that. It's possible that temp2 and temp3 are being used by find next. In fact, uh, that's moderately plausible. I'm going to have to step through this again. Okay. So, randstat.com break for F9 reset continue randstat.com Okay, we are here. So we push, uh, we reset the accumulator, we call find first, we see that our accumulator is still zero, which is what we expect. Why are we saving param? We don't need to anymore. We were saving param so we could use the other piece of uh, computation code, which expects the value in param. But we're not doing that. So let's just get rid of all of that, and that makes the code smaller. OK. So we're here. We're checking for the maximum possible uh, 6.4. Here is our DRNT stat.com with you know these numbers. Record count of 37, uh, extent an S2 of 0. So we zip through this code. We want to get rid of that. So we save DRNT, which we don't need to do anymore. We are now calculating the size of the file. So we get f s2, which is 0. Shift it. Stash. Fetch ex, which is 0. Shift it right by 1. And or it in to the high byte. Put it into x. OK, x is 0. Load. Uh, the high bit of the low byte, which is zero, load the record count and add it in. Three seven was carry set no. Is this bigger than the value in? our accumulator at 12. Should be. Right, so we now update our accumulator. 3700. We now forget the next, uh, next item. And it hasn't been overwritten. So this, we should have carry set because there are no more records. Uh. Carry is clear. Because I overwrote param, that's why. 
I should have put it back before calling find next. But we don't need to do this anymore because I've taken out the code to stash param. So rand stat.com is the right value. Okay, rand os 3 bdosasm is the wrong value. I think this means my maths need a bit of work. Let's try it on this the right value. Okay. So where were we? One four F nine. Okay. Uh, OS three D dos atom. Right. We're here. Step find first. Uh, is this the maximum possible length? No. Wait a minute. Ah, the record count is one two eight because the the record that we've, uh, the dear end that we've just seen, it does have the maximum possible length. It means it's full. So we now check ex, and that is not 1f. Right, we now calculate the size of the file based on this dear end. So s2 is 0, so we can skip through this. We get ex. This will be zero because the extents are created in order. Zero. Okay, now we have the low byte of. Uh, yeah, okay, we haven't added on the thing yet. So you'll see ADC, and we see that we have a low byte of eight zero. Carry is clear because it didn't roll over. So we now update the thing. Done. Find the next dear end. Carry is clear. Back to the top. So this one is also full. So we compare the extent, not maximum. So we go to here. S2 is still zero. It will always be zero. Fetch the extent. Extent number is zero. Because we were looking at the FCB, this one was right. That's why the record count was being updated, but the other values were all wrong. Still wrong. That's the right number. Okay, so find first. Here we fetch S2. Yeah, okay, I'm going to assume this works. Okay, second time through. 
fetch S2, which is 0. Fetch EX, which is 1. OK, we're now looking at the right thing. Uh, yeah. So we shift that right, carry is set, and A is 0. We OR in the S2 value, which of course will do nothing, and put it into X. We now prefet uh, compute the low byte number from the extent by using the carry, which we now see is 128. We now want to add in the record count, which we've done, which has gone to zero, carry is set. That means that it's, it's rolled over, so we increment x. So our file size now is 256. We've seen two full DRNs, therefore 256. So now we compare uh, x Wait a minute, wait a minute, this code is wrong, that's what's happening. Uh, ugh. So this is, is greater than or equal to, if it's greater than, then we always want to do the update. If it's equal to, then we need to compare the low byte. if not equal then we update the file size okay I think that is better the wrong command. You just as a continue. Five twelve. Sixteen. Fifty five. Okay, I think this is now working finally. one. I haven't tried it with a zero length file. But I think that I can be confident that will work. That's an annoying piece of code. I'm sure there's stuff here that can be commoned out and cleaned up. Uh, okay. Let's call that one done. Right, well, we are getting somewhere. It's now, I see it's 11 o'clock my time. I was kind of hoping to get this done, but... Uh, this one is going to be a pig. The reason why it's a pig is because it's a layer violation. So we go to write random. It's basically the same code. 
however, seek to block and create down here. calls this and inside this uh, well actually here we are going to want to decide to clear the block Uh, this will involve writing a certain number of zero records to the entire block to zero it. Uh, now I can this is calling seek to block to create here I could set a global flag that causes it to happen inside I could duplicate this. I yes, I don't want to do that now. I think what I will probably end up doing is having a global flag that tells this to clear blocks. Um, then uh, right filled will just set the flag and then fall through into this code. That will do all the work. That actually doesn't sound too bad, but I don't want to do that now. Okay, well, this is very nearly done, apart from all the bugs. And I should probably do something about error reporting. We do need hard errors, because that will let us do write protect stuff and so on. Um, and I can probably clean up a whole bunch of the error handling. For example, inside the entry code, which is up here. I should be um, saving the stack pointer so that I can have a generic error return call that I can call from anywhere that will reset the stack, that is unwind from wherever we've got to so that we can call it inside subroutines and places where we've pushed stuff onto the stack and leave a error value in the result. Uh, again, not particularly difficult, but it just needs doing. Okay, good. Uh, that was the wrong button. Next time then.